I went through the K about 2.38, I think it was. Three, two, one, let's go. Hey guys, it's Tom here from Pro Direct Running and you join me at Lee Valley Athletics Track where we're enlisting the help of elite middle distance runner Dan Jarvis to put a series of shoes in the Nike running lineup through their paces. So Dan's going to complete a 4 by 1200 meter session for us using each of the shoes in different categories of the lineup to work out whether the pinnacle performance shoes in the Nike lineup are worth your hard earned cash. Before we introduce you to Dan and get cracking with the session, if you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to make sure you're notified every time we launch running content just like this. Hello, my name is Dan Jarvis and I'm an elite middle distance athlete who has represented Great Britain on the track for the 3000 meter steeplechase and on the cross country in 2017 in San Marin. I'm currently training for a sub 63 half marathon early next year. So it's a typically cold British winter's day, so we've given Dan a nice amount of time to do a little warm up. And whilst he does that, I'm gonna take you through the shoes that he's gonna be using in today's session. So first up on the list, and by far the most accessible shoe that we'll be trying out today, is the Nike Revolution 6. At just over 50 quid, it doesn't pack many bells and whistles, but if you're just getting into running and you're looking for your first pair of running shoes then you don't want to break the bank, they could be a pretty solid option to bear in mind. I'm personally pretty intrigued to see how Dan gets on in these as I know he's used to some of the top tier performers, um, so it should be interesting. So the next shoe that Dan's going to be using for his second 1200 meter rep is the Pegasus 38. Now obviously it's a very reliable, tried and tested daily workhorse of a shoe, but it may not be your first pick for track sessions. It's got a slightly heavier React midsole, but it is still decently versatile, so it'll be interesting to see how Dan fares in the Pegasus. All right, so the penultimate shoe that we're gonna get Dan running in is the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2. Now, if you're watching this video, you might not need me to tell you too much about this shoe, but we've got a full-length ZoomX midsole, the carbon fiber plate, very lightweight upper, but the stack height of this shoe obviously exceeds 25 millimeters, therefore making it technically illegal for track racing. We know that Dan uses this shoe quite a lot in his training, as he mentioned earlier, so I'll be interested to see what sort of times he can knock out for the 1200 meters in these before he jumps into the spikes. So last but not least for the final 1200 meter rep, we're gonna get Dan laced up in the Nike Dragonfly. Now, the Dragonfly share some of the same characteristics as the Next% Percent with the same ZoomX foam in the midsole, but we've got a partial plate in here and it's not made of carbon, it's a, a composite plate and an impossibly lightweight upper. The Dragonfly really is a top pick for middle distance runners out there, even those not sponsored by Nike. Just to clarify before we get started, in keeping with the IAAF rulings, it is technically illegal to race on the track in a shoe which exceeds 25 millimeters of stack height. So just bear that in mind when making your purchase decision for shoes that you may be racing in. So we're all warmed up, ready to go. Um, the session will be four by 1200 meters with a shoe change recovery and a little bit of briefing about how I responded to the shoes each rep, but we're all good to go. Three, two, one, let's go. Step the teeth. In terms of time, it's probably a little bit quicker. Yeah. But likewise, there is a noticeable difference with the shoes they're not soft. Yeah. But really, I don't think there's going to be a massive amount of difference between these and the pegs. We're going on to the second rep now. Three, two, one. Let's go. So we're halfway through there the K in about 2.52. So, I'll come to the little bit more relative distance to talk about. Um, 
through in 252, so seven seconds faster than what I went through in the revolution. It's known to be quicker. Um, well, that was a 318. So I've kind of pulled another two seconds for that quicker from the pegs. But a lot of you at home are probably thinking, yeah, I do kind of run for a living and it's going to be naturally that I'm going to run quicker. But likewise, the same principle of changing shoes is probably going to be very similar to yourself moving from likewise the Revolution to the Pegasus to the Vaporfly and now we're into for what quite a lot of you watching the video at home it's going to be a slightly different transition and it may be your first introduction to the Dragonfly Last rep, Dragonfly's on 3, 2, 1, let's go Right, it's known to be quicker. So as you can tell with those four reps, starting with the Revolution, um, I ran a 3.35 for the 1200, moving through to the, obviously the latter stage, I was running the Dragonfly, I ran a 3.13, 3.14, so 20 seconds difference. So if you're looking for a new spike, Dragonfly is definitely for you. <laughs> So to recap, what did you run in the Revolution 6 for the 1200 meter rep? So in the Revolution 6, I ran a 3.36 for the 1200 to go through the K in around 2.59 to three minutes. Beautiful. And in the Pegasus 38? So onto the Pegasus 38, I think it was a 3.26 going through the K in 2.52. Yeah, so quite a noticeable difference, um, you say. Uh, if we get into the business end and start talking about, you know, the, the, the carbon plated shoe that we use today, the Vaporfly Next Percent 2, I know personally that you've got every colorway under the sun of this shoe, you wear it a lot, you race in it. Um, how did it feel stepping up from a shoe like the Pegasus, a daily trainer, into obviously a dedicated race day option? So first of all, obviously you're in a lightweight shoe, completely different material in the sole and you do have that carbon plate, the first thing you do notice when you step through the shoe is that roll onto the forefoot which once you are running is quite a nice dynamic movement and it does help you on your way around the track. Lovely, and so do you remember what you went through a K in uh, so during the 1200 meter rep in the vapor flight? Going through a K I went through in 2.45 and I ran an overall rep of 3.18 in the vapor fly. Unbelievable, yeah and what <laughs> What would you say is the main the main difference? So obviously that's a fair bit quicker than what you went through a K in, uh, in in the Pegasus. Is it purely the carbon plate? Is it the foam? Is it a combination of the two? I would honestly say it's a combination of the two. A lot of people do talk about shoes and carbon plated shoes. Likewise, I feel like Nike have it down to a T with the Zoom X material. It does offer you a lot of protection whilst you're out on the run. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret, isn't it? You know, every brand's got a carbon plated shoe these days, but people are still, the majority of people are still gravitating towards the Vaporfly for that Zoom X. So, yeah, can't argue with that. Um, and I guess, finally, looking at the Dragonfly. Again, a shoe that I believe you've used previously before, but not, not extensively. Um, how did it feel stepping down into a slightly more minimal shoe and a lighter shoe compared even to the, to the Vaporfly? So at a high end level, um, this is my go-to race shoe um, when I run on the track from 1500 um, a mile all the way up to 5k on the track. Um, and I brought it obviously into my rotation in summer 2020 when it first released. I don't see any other contenders uh, bring, taking it out of that rotation in the near future. Yeah, and so getting into the nitty gritty in terms of timing, um, what did you go through a K in for the 1200 meter in the, in the Dragonfly, if so you remember? In the Dragonfly, I went through the K in 241 to 242. Was it approximate split? Yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> that is seriously quick. Um, and how, you know, how does that vary in comparison to what you would normally do, do a session in. So if you're normally doing a, a, a session similar to this, is that about the sort of time that you would normally normally hit? So breaking down into a session, if the reps were slightly longer, um, I don't think I'd go through the K that quick in terms of a 1200 meter rep, or if I was doing 
a group bunch of kilometre reps. I reckon on average I'd go for about 244 to 245 yeah. in a vapor fly and dragonfly crew approximately. So Dan, we briefly touched on all of the shoes that you used in today's session. Um, we kind of concluded that the Revolution 6, for someone who's just starting out their running journey, is probably a, a great option just to you know get up and running. Uh, excuse the pun. But how would you situate the other three shoes that you tried into uh, a running rotation suited for different purposes? So if you're looking to bring in different shoes to your rotation and you have been, for example, using the Revolution 6 as your starter shoe and you're starting to realise that you are enjoying your running and you want to bring in new options, you're going to notice obviously on the track today that I, the Revolution 6 is definitely a viable option to use as a running shoe. I was able to run it today. It was a fully cushioned shoe and supported shoe. But likewise, you get a lot more shoe for your money once you step up to the Pegasus in terms of the my everyday mileage shoe. And then once you're looking to move into a race day training shoe um, out on the roads, if you're racing 5K, 10K, half marathons, the Vaporfly is definitely a race day training option and then moving forwards if you're going to dabble in racing on the track likewise you cannot use the vapor fly on race day and the track it's a great training shoe option a lot of support and protection but if you're moving through for a nike race shoe on the track you can't go wrong with the dragonfly yeah i mean just finally i've personally worn uh, the Vaporfly for a decent amount of, of sessions on the road, uh, but I've never stepped into the Dragonfly and, and used it for any sessions on the track. For someone like myself who's considering dipping their toes into that track racing arena, how much benefit do you think you do get from a dedicated track spike like the, like the Dragonfly? So obviously one of the main differences between the two shoes, first off, you get the spike plate in the bottom. When you turn up on race day, it could be windy, it could be rainy, it could be 25 degrees in sun, the spike plate does offer you a massive difference in comparison to a regular running sole. Mm. You get a lot more traction on the track, which is quite noticeable. And then likewise, you're moving through, you've got a fully cushioned zoom X under your forefoot. So we hope that you found this video useful today and realized that Nike really does have a running shoe for everybody. Even a shoe like the Revolution 6, which as Dan Jarvis proved, you can still run fast in. So if like me you've worn your fair share of running shoes over the years and are still contemplating whether or not to pick up a spike and take your running to the next level, seeing how Dan was able to shave off a few seconds per lap and seeing how great the elites make the Dragonfire look has definitely put it right at the top of my wish list. So that's just about going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and drop us a comment down below if you've tried out any of the shoes that Dan was running in today and remember you can shop the full Nike running collection at prodirectrunning.com. Thank you.